but the Canadian government and Kurdish officials remain publicly at odds over what exactly happened. Kurdish officials say the Canadian soldiers showed up at the front line unannounced, but Canada maintains the team was there for a prearranged rendezvous with Kurdish troops. Joining me now is Fala Mustafa. He is the head of the Foreign Relations Department for the Kurdistan Regional Government. It's the body that controls the autonomous Kurdish region in northern Iraq. Fala Mustafa tweeted after the death of Sergeant Duaron. I want to show you that now. On behalf of the KRG, I express my deepest condolences to the family of the brave Canadian soldier. We will honor and remember his service. Fala Mustafa, welcome to the program today. Thank you. Okay, what do you think happened Friday night on the battlefield that resulted in the death of a Canadian soldier? Take me through what happened from your point of view. Well, first of all, let me start by thanking the people and the government of Canada being part of the coalition, which has supported us in our fight against the terrorists of ISIS. Second, we would like to thank the Canadian government for the military assistance and as well as humanitarian assistance that they have provided to the displaced people and refugees in Kurdistan. Uh, this is an unfortunate incident that happened as a result of a friendly fire. Uh, a Canadian has lost his life, and we express our deep condolences to the family of the, of the victim. And we are ready to cooperate with the Canadian government to carry out investigation, and we will take all the necessary measures in order to make sure that this investigation is there. Indeed, it was a friendly fire. Uh, we're sad, and it's unfortunate that this has happened. What made you change your mind from the initial statements from the Kurdish government? Well, the, the, uh, the official statement that was issued by the Ministry of Peshmerga in Kurdistan regional government stated the same thing. It was unfortunate some uh, Peshmerga in the front line that they have uh, talked to the media, but the government officials have expressed their deep uh, condolences to the family and to the government and people of Canada. And also we have been in touch with the Canadian ambassador to Iraq in order to look into this case. And we have shown responsibility in working together with the Canadian team to carry out an investigation. That's what officially has been communicated to the Canadian officials. When was that communicated to the Canadian officials? Uh, it was communicated to the Canadian officials the day after it happened or the, the morning of uh, the unfortunate event that took place. Okay. Our Defense Minister, Jason Kenney, says the Special Ops forces were 200 meters behind the front lines. They were approaching a Kurdish observation post behind the forward operating line. They had made plans earlier to return to that position that night with prearranged signals with your troops. They had arranged this rendezvous before that one of your men mistook them for the enemy and opened fire. The Canadians had made it through two groups of Peshmerga without incident and were in fact given permission by your forces to proceed toward that observation post. Do you agree with what the Canadian government is saying here? But I have to be honest with you, this is a purely military issue and this is an issue between the Canadian soldiers and the Peshmerga forces on the ground. And the, the results of the investigation will clarify all these details that would, that would be announced to, to the public in Canada as well as in Kurdistan. But we do know that this was a friendly fire, it was unintended, it was unwanted, and we thank the the soldiers and the government and people of Canada for being with us at this difficult time. And of course, this is a tough time. We have, we are in a front line fighting the terrorists of ISIS on a front line which is 1,050 kilometers long. Therefore, this is not an easy circumstance and it is not a normal circumstance. We do understand the difficulties of being in the front line. But as I said, uh, even yesterday there was a meeting of the Ministry of Peshmerga with the coalition partners who were there, the minister of Peshmerga has communicated to the Canadian side, we are ready to carry out the investigation to work together to see uh, what was the, the reason and why okay. this has happened. It is unfortunate, it is, uh, it's sad, but it has happened. That's why we, we, on behalf of the Kurdistan regional government and the people of Kurdistan, express our deep sorrows and condolences to the family and to the people of Canada for this loss. Do you believe it was ultimately the Canadians' fault? 
Well, it's not a matter. The, the, the end result is that we have lost a life of a, a, a man from a friendly nation. That's why the minister of Peshmerga said we will consider him as a, as a martyr of our Peshmerga. Therefore, we have been fighting together against the enemy. We were not in two different fronts. We were the same team in fighting against the terrorist group. It's expected that Canada will extend the mission. Is that your understanding as well? Well, we do hope and request that Canada continues its presence. They have been uh, helpful, supportive. They have been among the first countries who have come to help us militarily in terms of humanitarian assistance, as well as the frequent visits of high-ranking officials from Canada. Therefore, we are expecting and we do request Canada extends its mission because they have provided needed assistance to the Peshmerga forces and also to the displaced people who are in Kurdistan. What is the role of the special ops forces from the way you see it? Are we training your fighters? Well, you're training, you are building the capacity and also sharing your expertise with our people. As I said, this is a tough fight. It's a long front line. We're fighting a terrorist group armed with heavy weapons, with sophisticated weapons. Uh, therefore, for us, uh, for example, in the counter IEDs, Canadians have a lot of experience in sharing that with our Peshmerga forces. They have brought uh, robots in order to deal with this. And also in fighting this urban warfare, fighting against terrorism. There is a lot that we can learn from our Canadian partners. At the end of the day, uh, do you believe that the Canadian government will agree to your request? As I understand it, you've requested an extension to the mission of the Canadian fighters. Has Canada given you any indication that they will agree to that request? Well, we were pleased to have the Canadian foreign minister visiting us last week. We hope that he has got an opportunity to see firsthand the situation on the ground. He had an opportunity to meet with the, with the leadership here in Kurdistan region. He met with President of Kurdistan, Sir Masood Barzani. He met with other officials in Kurdistan region. He met with the uh, displaced people. He was here in order to assess the situation. We hope that as a result of this and also the role of the Canadian ambassador who has visited here numerous times, we would be able to get the extension because this is our expectation from our friends in, the, uh, in Canada and also around the world to continue supporting us in this fight, which is a threat not only to Kurdistan and the region, it's a threat to all of us around the world. Therefore, we need partners and Canada has been a, a, a good partner for us since the beginning and we hope it will continue. Okay. We're sad and sorry about what has happened, but we hope that this will not affect the, the relationship that has been developed between Kurdistan region and Canada. Okay, one more question, just a question of clarification. You had indicated you're now willing to work with the Canadians on an investigation. The last information we had, there would be four investigations. One, the military police would be conducting one. Two, the Canadian Special Operations segment would be conducting one. The coalition group would be conducting one. And, of course, the Kurdistan forces would be conducting one. Are you saying now that the Kurdistan forces will conduct a joint operation, investigation into what happened with the Canadians? We are ready to work closely with the Canadians and we are at their disposal to carry out this because what we want is to make sure that things go the right way and both of us take our responsibility in this because we consider Canada as a partner and we look forward to have a long-term relationship with Canada. Therefore, uh, among partners, there has to be this openness and the Minister of Peshmerga has indicated that we are ready to work closely with the Canadian government on this case. So, and as I understand it from our conversation today, sir, you are ready to agree with the government. It was a case of friendly fire, but no longer willing to say publicly that the, the uh, Peshmerga believes it was the fault of the Canadians until an investigation is, the results of a re investigation are released. Well, certainly under such kind of circumstances, it would not be wise to immediately release a kind of statement and saying or putting or throwing the blame on the other side. This was a friendly fire. It happened. And we did not like that to happen. You did not like that to happen. But unfortunately, it happened. Therefore, we need to work together, both sides, since we have been partners. And as partners, we will conduct it together and we will investigate into the case. That's oh. why 
Uh, even a representative from the Prime Minister of Kurdistan Regional Government attended the meeting, and on behalf of Prime Minister, he extended condolences to the family uh, of uh, uh, the victim Duaran, as well as yeah. the Canadian government. All right. Fala Mustafa, the head of the Foreign Relations Department for the Kurdistan Regional Government, thank you for joining me from Erbil in Iraq.